Hi, this is James C2 back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to look at marketing campaigns within Dynamic CRM. Within CRM you have the option of quick campaigns or marketing campaigns. A quick campaign is simply a campaign with which you can do one activity. For example, send out a bulk email or create a list of phone calls to make. But with a marketing campaign, what you can do is have a series of activities which all merge into one big campaign. So you could use this, for example, to monitor a mailing and telesales activity to increase your market share or increase your customer base. And because it's done within CRM, all of your results can be tracked within your CRM. So what we're going to do first is going to go to the marketing area and what we want to do is go to campaigns. There are the quick campaigns I was talking about earlier but today we're going to be looking at campaigns. So when I go in here what you can see is a list of templates for campaigns or campaigns which are running. If you open up a campaign, an existing one, whether it's a template or not, when you go in you can see you can copy an existing campaign to be a new one and then just make simple edits. But we don't want to show you that in this tutorial so what we're going to do is create a new one from scratch. So from my campaign view I simply click new. So what I'll do is I'm going to call this a demo campaign. The campaign code, I can specify some data in here, but I'm not going to because I want to show you one of the features of this. We can put a campaign type. In this case, we're going to do a direct marketing campaign, but you can see there are other types here. And as with all aspects of CRM, if you need more options here, you can customize that to suit your own needs. Expected response, if I had one, I'm going to say we expect 25% of people contacted to respond. So I've got my basic details in here. I'm going to put a proposed start date. Let's go for 15th of July. Let's say we want that to run for one month. So we'll switch that off on the 14th of August. The actual start and actual end date can be filled in later on. And the offer, what we're actually offering. Now I'm going to, so you can see where this appears later on, put the words offer goes in here. And then I can save my campaign. Simple enough, just like most records within CRM, we go ahead, hit save, and it will create it. Now, because I didn't put in a campaign code when I was creating this, CRM has given it its own campaign code, which is a unique reference, so we can locate this campaign later on. You can use your own codes, but if you don't put one in, CRM will make one for you. If you don't like the default option here of CMP and then some numbers, if you speak to your system administrator, they could go in and change that in the settings for you. But that is a admin only feature. Okay, so we've created our campaign. Now what we do is actually have to add the lists of people we want to contact in our campaign. So we'll go to marketing lists on the right hand side here, hit the plus icon, and I can select any marketing list that's in the system that I have access to, to my campaign. Because I have the rights to do so, I can even create a new marketing list from here. We won't be covering the creation of marketing lists in this video, but we do already have another one in our catalogue showing you how to make marketing lists. I'm just going to select the first two, marketing list tutorial one and two, select them and add them. You can see we can add these marketing lists to the campaign only or to the campaign and all undistributed campaign activities. I'm going to choose the second option for reasons that you'll see in a second. I'm going to add that. You may see underneath marketing lists, we also have the option of adding leads. So if you have some leads who don't appear in any of the marketing lists or don't appear in marketing lists which are suitable for this campaign, but you think they'd be interested in this campaign, you can add them here. So let's just add this gentleman. So this campaign, as it stands, will be made up of phone calls and emails, which I've yet to create, and it will go to every member of this marketing list, every member of this marketing list, and this lead. So before we go on, I'm going to save my work. Not that I need to, but I will. Then, once we've specified some of these details, we've worked out who we're going to send it to, we can then start adding activities to our campaign. And again, I go to the plus icon, it will open up a new window, and with this, I want to make an initial email. Now, obviously, your 
naming convention would be better than this, but for demonstration purposes I need to keep it simple, so initial email we'll call that. It confirms which campaign it's used in. We can also specify what type of activity it is. Is it research? Is it content preparation? Is it lead qualification? And so on. This one would be a direct initial contact, so I'm going to put that, and it's done by email. Now, the options you have are phone, appointment, letter, letter via mail merge, fax, fax via mail merge, email, email via mail merge or other. Please do note you can only use the mail merge functions if you're using the Outlook for CRM add-on. If you don't have that, that option doesn't work. But I want to send emails. For outsourced vendors, you could have accounts listed here if you have any third-party vendors who are going to do the marketing activity for you. You can add them here. The scheduled end. Our campaign, if you look in the top left hand corner, is proposed to start on the 15th of July and end on the 14th of August. Because it's an initial email, I need it to end a little earlier than the 14th of August to give people time to make the follow-up call. So I'm going to make that open for just the one week. So I'll put 15th of July in here. Apologies to any of our users who use American format. But we're UK based, so I'm using the UK format for dates. I'll save that and close it, and we can see that the campaign activity has been added to our campaign. Now, after the emails have been made, I want to follow that up with phone calls. So, I'm going to add another activity. This one I'm going to call the follow-up call. This wouldn't be research, I would say this is more lead qualification, and we want to make that by phone call. Now, I don't want that to start until after the phone calls have been made, or at least started, so let's start that on the 19th of July, and we'll make those right up until the 14th of August. Now, when you're doing campaign activities, I didn't do it in the last one because I intended to use just an internal email system, but there may be a budget involved with your campaign activity. Now, we wouldn't be making the calls ourselves. We may use a vendor for that. We may not, but there will be a cost involved. I'm going to allocate a budget of £1,000 to those calls. The actual cost was 650 Let's put that in. And I can also specify anti-spam settings if someone who's already been contacted with the same activity type from the same campaign in a specified period, let's say that's two days, an activity won't be made for them for another two days. So I'm going to save that. And when I back out or come back to my campaign, scroll down, we can start to see the financials reflected here. So the activity cost is £650 because that was the, the budget for the follow-up calls. I'm going to specify our total allocated budget is £3,000. Our miscellaneous costs, we'll say, are 1200 which will give a total, once I've saved it, of 1850 from an allocated budget. But pay attention to the activity cost, because that's a locked field. If I then add on another activity, so I might say we'll do a second follow-up call. This time it wouldn't be research, it would definitely be lead qualification. That's also me done by phone. Let's say that cost is slightly more, we'll say that's a thousand pounds. Put the same anti-spam filter on it. I can save that. And when I refresh the screen, there it is, it's reflected in here. So as you add campaign activities and add costs for that, they will be reflected in your overall financials at the bottom here. But we'll come back and look at that in a second. One thing I do want to go back and show you though, is the marketing lists. Because we added marketing lists to the whole campaign, they will automatically be added to each of these campaign activities. So the initial email will be sent to both marketing lists. The follow-up call will be made to both marketing lists. If I only wanted one of the marketing lists to be used in the second follow-up call, for whatever reason, I can scroll here and I could remove a marketing list from that activity. When I'm creating activities, let's go back and show you that. If I go ahead and create a new activity, so we'll say this is a second email, no cost for that, but I want to send that to a specific marketing list. There we go, I could send that to marketing list two. If, however, we didn't add any marketing lists at this point, we could add them individually at this point. 
but that one we don't want so I'm going to remove it anyway. Now that's how to create a campaign. So we've created a campaign here, we've added marketing lists to it, we've added an extra lead to it, we've added our campaign activities. So what we can do now when we're ready to go is look at the status details at the top of the screen. If I click here, I can specify my campaign is proposed, it's ready to launch, it's launched, it's completed. Well, this one's ready to launch, so I'll save that. And now watch what we do with the activities. If I come down to the activities, let's say we're ready to go with this email. What we'll do is we open the activity and I choose this option here, distribute campaign activities. Now, because this is an email, it's going to let me use an email template. If I don't have this highlighted, if you notice, I can specify who the email's from, I can select the subject and I can put some text in. Or, I can use a template. So let's choose that. I want to use, let's say it's a contact reconnect template. Again, we're not going to be showing you how to create email templates, but if you wish to, there are videos on that. So let's go in. When I hit distribute, it then gives me the option. Who do I want the emails to come from? Do I want them to come from me? Do I want them to come from a specific user or team? Do I want to add them to a queue? Or do I want the owners of the records in the target marketing list to be used? So that would mean if I was the owner of the lead or the contact or the account that's in the marketing list, the email would come from me. If it was my colleague John, the email would come from John. If it was my colleague Cindy, it would come from Cindy. But I want to just leave that as a sign to me to keep it simple. We distribute and the emails are then created and distributed and go out to the relevant people. When we're ready to go again, we can go back to the campaign. When we're ready to make the second call, let's make the follow-up call now. We'll go in there, we'll distribute that, and because it's a phone call, again, I can put things in here. So subject, I'll just say that's follow-up call. And if you remember, when we put in the offer, in the campaign, that goes in here. So the people who are notified that if they make phone calls know what it's about. We can't put in call from, we can't put in call to, we can't put in regarding because it's making lots and lots of records that are coming from specified people. So if I hit distribute again, there we go. Is it the owner of the records? Yes, I'll say that. I want the owner of the record to call them and that passes it all out. So that's how to create a campaign. One of the most powerful features you'll see with the campaigns is the ability to convert responses. And what that means is as responses come in and are recorded within your CRM to your emails and your calls and things like that, you'll see responses listed underneath your campaign. And when we open a response, let's look at this one, you will see that in the top left hand corner we have convert campaign response. And what that means is we can take this response from our campaign and convert it into a lead. We can convert it into an existing lead. You can create a quote, an order or an opportunity for an account or a contact, or you can just close the response. But it means you can then take further action. For example, you can create a lead for the sales team, or you can create a lead which is added to a particular marketing list. Once it's added to a particular marketing list, you can then use that list in a further campaign. But basically what's happening is someone is responding to your campaign, details are being held within CRM, and then you can use any of CRM or its apps functionality to progress that lead, that quote, that opportunity further. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of the campaigns. Please do remember we've got a whole catalogue of tutorial videos available on our YouTube channel. If you'd be interested, just go there, give this one a like, or even better, subscribe. If you'd like a free trial of CRM or you'd like any more information, just click on the links or please feel free to get in touch. And thanks for watching.